All right, it's time to talk technicals. Joining me now to share what the charts are telling him for the year ahead is Craig Johnson, Senior Technical Research Strategist for Piper Joffrey. Craig, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So based on what you're seeing in the charts, what's your outlook for the S&P 500 this year? Well, we're very bullish uh, on the overall market. We're actually looking for uh, the S&P 500 to finally break top side of the secular uh, bear market we've been in since 2000. So we're looking for the market to, market to break top side of 1550 and ultimately touch about 1700 as we get into uh, the latter part of uh, 2013. And I have in my notes, uh, you made a pretty bold call back in uh, August 2012 on the S&P 500 um, that you would expect to see 2,000 on the S&P by the year 2014. Are you still standing by that call? Absolutely. We, we still continue to stand by that call. We do think we are going to hit 2,000 on the S&P 500 uh, by the end of 2014. And, you know, really, I think there's going to be a couple drivers that are going to get us there that are really starting to play out. Number one, we're going to start to see assets coming out of fixed income funds and coming back into equities. And if you saw the money flow numbers from last week, it was a record inflow last week for, for money coming into equity funds. And second, I think as some of the concerns uh, about the fiscal cliff and some of the European financial crisis begin to wane, I think that will lead to some uh, expansion in the overall multiple that's assigned to the marketplace. So again, a lot of the things that we were looking for and calling for in August of uh, last year are really starting to play out and we're more confident today than we were then. You mentioned the, the money flows into stocks and, and out of bonds. You know, what's your outlook for the 10-year Treasury? We did see it break out of that range of 1.6, 1.8 to bump up against 1.9 uh, earlier this year before coming back a little bit. Uh, what's, your, what's your outlook for 2013? Again, we think rates are going to be rising as we progress through 2013. What we laid out originally at the beginning of the year is for rates to rise toward two, two and a quarter. Um, yeah, and you are correct that that top side breakout above that 1.90 level was a pretty important level. And uh, we see rates rising up to two, two and a quarter. If we were to look at a kind of a stretch goal, that might be closer to 2.4, 2.5% 2 10-year bond yield. So uh, rates coming up are ultimately going to be very bullish for the overall equity market. So, Craig, which individual stock charts look most promising for the year ahead? Well, several charts look pretty good. We think that the financials still look very attractive. Stocks like Goldman Sachs, Dick GS look constructive. Barclays look pretty interesting. Uh, and also Lloyd's Group in the financials. I'd also mention Bank of America. If we look at inside the industrial sector, which is starting to be uh, look a lot more constructive in terms of relative performance, things like Eaton Vance, Emerson, are just a couple of the names there that look pretty attractive. And then on the flip side, which uh, stock charts are sort of sending warning signals, which, in which case, which stocks would you avoid then for the year ahead? Well, we continue to remain to be underweight the energy sector. And we continue, and actually, we've been underweight, to be clear, about 65 weeks we've been underweight the energy sector. We continue to remain underweight energy at this point in time. So the drillers uh, still continue to look very weak to us. Things like uh, NOV look pretty weak on the drilling side. We also think that the utility sector and the rising interest rate environment probably is not going to fare very well. So we're seeing utilities and also energy as uh, resources of uh, spots to take money out of the marketplace and reposition into financials and also industrials. But Craig, is that short term or do you think that in the second half of the year we could see a reversal uh, back into utilities or energy? I don't think so because um, from, from our perspective, looking back at history, looking at the periods like 19, late 1940s and 1952 specifically, and also the late 1970s and early 1980s, those are periods where we saw secular shifts really start to unfold. And when we saw those secular shifts unfold, the energy sector was a relative strength laggard from 1982 all the way to 2000. And we think we're closer to that 1982 period than really any other period in the last 10 years. So this is going to be a longer term trend and theme playing out from our perspective. Uh, Craig, there's been a lot of news surrounding Apple lately, a lot of negatives out uh, for that company, that stock. Uh, what is the chart telling you about Apple now? Great question. So the shares of Apple have been a phenomenal winner for most investors over the last uh, five years or so. But at this point in time, it looks like the Apple shares have recently just violated a very long-term uptrend support line. And the most recent relief rally failed right exactly at the 200-day moving average. To us, 
$500 is a very important support level for Apple. If we fail to hold 500, I think it opens up the door for another leg lower, and really the next level of support comes in around 4 or 425 for Apple. So it's a, it's, a, it's a stock that we're concerned about at these levels. All right, Craig, we'll go ahead and leave it there. Thanks so much for your insight. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Craig Johnson, Senior Technical Research Strategist for Piper Jaffray.